<laughs> in compliance with the open public meeting law, I wish to state on a, that on July 21st, 2023, the notice of this meeting of the Upper Township Committee was posted in the official Township Bulletin Board and the Upper Township website, mailed to the Cape May County Gazette, the Atlantic City Press, the Ocean City Sentinel-Ledger, the Herald Times, and filed with the Township Clerk. Tonight's meeting is being video recorded up until the closed por session portion of this meeting and will be available on the Upper Township website. I hereby direct that this announcement be made a part of the minutes of this meeting. Would you please rise for the flag sweep? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Joanne, would you mind calling the roll, please? President. Present. Here. 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 Uh, your uh, pleasure on the minutes. Hereby move that the minutes from July 10th, 2023, both regular and closed session, be approved. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Okay, uh, we'll start uh, down with Mr. Pankos. Then. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll be brief. Um, Public Works is continuing to work on uh, the senior center. There's troubleshooting the air conditioning system. Um, until they can get that worked out with uh, they have an expert come in on that particular unit to take a look at it. So until that can uh, get fixed, they're still going to keep the temporary units in place. That way that senior center can stay operational. And also, uh, I did receive a late email. Um, I'm going to forward that to Gary, the public works guys. Uh, the intersection of 50 and Tuckahoe Road right by the Varys. Um, there, a couple of people are asking to have that intersection cleaned up a little bit. I guess it's overgrown. I think uh, our public works has helped out in the past to take. Of course, we got the approval from. I think we've done it in the past, so we'll, yes. we'll, we'll work through and uh, see if we can't get that cleaned up a little bit. Um, that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Victor. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming in. Uh, well, you guys as well. Uh, and control, not so much to report. Uh, as far as the courts are concerned, just bring everybody's attention to number four. We will be reappointing Judge Birchmeyer tonight. Um, spoke with him on the phone, and he's very enthusiastic about moving forward. Everybody down in the court is very happy with his work, so very happy that that made it onto the agenda. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Happy birthday, Victor, tomorrow. Uh, there you oh, go. Happy birthday. <laughs> 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 yeah, that does it all fun. <laughs> Kim. So just a couple updates. So we had our quarterly sports and rec advisory board meeting um, about two weeks ago. Our fall sports season is going through sign-ups. Some of them have already started practices. Our football team just finished, completed their camp week. Um, they just wanted to extend their gratitude to the local fire departments, Tuckahoe Memorial and Seville, who came and cooled off their players at the end of camp during some hot days. Um, also, thank you to the Ocean City High School team who came out and participated in the red and white barbecue, which is a really nice tradition that they have there where you get to see a lot of those boys who played at the Pee Wee League come back as their, when they're high school players and give back a little bit. Um, we also had an update from our Disc Golf, which has started their own league on Wednesday nights. And through the app that they use to track, they have tracked that we have had visitors from as far as Maine and Tennessee. So it's pretty cool to, to see one of the projects, one of the goals of that project was to give um, people from outside of the township a reason to come into the township and hopefully frequent our businesses. So it's good to see that word is spreading and we are starting to draw a crowd. Um, I also want to share that we will be partnering with Cape Assist for their Strengthening Families program. This is a program that is for parents of children ages 10 to 14, focuses on parenting skills, communication, and also bonding with, um, with you know, your children. That tween age is always tough. Any of us who have had children that age know that that's always a difficult time. So that will begin Wednesday, August 2nd, 4 to 7 at the Senior Center, and will continue every Wednesday until September 13th, the same time. If you want to register, you can either go to the Township website, Township social media page, or capeassist.org slash SFP. And that is all I have this evening. Thank you. Curtis. Thank you. I don't have too much. Uh, we're almost two-thirds of the way through the summer. It's been a very good summer, and the lifeguards are doing a fantastic job. And uh, after this meeting tonight at 6.30, we have a home field race, so a lifeguard challenge race. So that's, uh, they're holding their own in the competitions. I don't have any of the results, but they placed second a couple things, won a couple of things. But overall, they're holding their own with the bigger department. <coughs> we're one of the smaller departments, and it's 
actually fun to watch. It's a good competition. A lot of camaraderie. Oh, yeah. A lot of good fun. <laughs> Is that it? That's it. Thank you, Curtis. Um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, we have I got a couple things. First of all, um, I was able to last Thursday, my days run together. Last Thursday, I was able to uh, travel over to Strathmere and participate and assist and observe more than anything a, uh, a, a training session by our lifeguards that ran between the, uh, our Upper Township Beach Patrol, the Ocean City Beach Patrol, Strathmere Fire Company, and the Ocean City Fire Department, which all worked together in water rescues. And um, the, our Chief Coker was over there as well. Uh, and it was pretty impressive to watch everybody work together. It was the first time they had done that. Uh, we've been requesting that for years, and uh, first time we got Ocean City on board, Ocean City Beach Patrol, which is, uh, uh, there's been a change in leadership over there, helped out, and they did a f f fantastic job. They all, they're all there for the same goal, have virtually the same equipment. Uh, as usual, communications issues came up, but I think we solved that by the end of it because uh, we all use the same dispatch center, so it doesn't make any sense for us not to be able to, to talk to each other. Uh, there's a lot of incidents, fortunately or unfortunately, in the, in the inlet and the back bay waters behind there, and they've decided to adopt a policy that calls for all four agencies to be dispatched on any incident in those areas, regardless of the, uh, uh, regardless of the situation or regardless of where it might actually end up being because it's the, the whole goal is to get uh, public safety there as quickly as possible. I also was able to meet, um, uh, it was kind of a sudden meeting, I was a sudden meeting, but it was uh, a short notice, let's put short notice meeting, short notice meeting with um, Senator Testa and his office along with the New Jersey Department of Transportation Commissioner. Um, it was, we had several major, three major issues that we were uh, discussing uh, regarding uh, the, uh, the relationship between the New Jersey DOT and the township and the roads that are in town. Uh, first of all, the uh, Route 9 is going to be repaved this fall uh, from Wrights Lane, which is the last road in in uh, Seaville before you get the township line Actually, all the way to what's that? Not the right left. It's close. It's uh, the first one. It's the first the one's from nine to fifty south. Yes. So you got oh, okay. You got Nicholas, you got yeah. The other. I thought the right was was further. Either way, it does make a difference. They're paving a lot of road yeah. uh, from uh, from Seaville all the way to Harbor Road, um, and and that's a, that's a good thing. Some of the road is in uh, not in uh, great condition, but that'll be uh, that'll be taken care of hopefully uh, in the next couple of. Um, months that'll be done. We also had uh, the infamous uh, Garden State Parkway exit 20. Uh, we didn't get, we got some good news on that, that it is quote unquote in the pipeline, which is further along than we've ever been before. Uh, we're looking for some clarification on that. Uh, so we had a, um, so we had a good good news from there. We're looking at some clarification and some concrete evidence on that. So, uh, you know, it, I, I don't want to speak out of turn, but it, verbally it was good good news on that that particular uh, situation. Uh, we also had a, uh, an issue with, uh, if everybody remembers the re, um, the revamping of uh, Route 50 in the Tuckahoe Village downtown Tuckahoe. There was a um, uh, whole the, the state came state of new jersey came in and did a whole revamping of that uh, area and part of that was supposed to be a emergency light uh for the tuckahoe fire company which sits on route 50 and it's pretty dangerous coming out of there emergency light would activate when they are to be dispatched when they're dispatched it's radio uh, frequency uh or manually operated so that was um that was, I don't want to say nicks on the budget, but what happened was they they raised the price on it. There was a township match to that, and they raised the price on it uh, probably like 110% uh, or something 120%. like that. 120%. And which raised the township's match to that, and we thought that that was ridiculous, so we appealed to them. And they today I did get a phone call from Senator Testa himself. He said that that has been worked out, that we will still be responsible for the original match on the original price. They raised the price on it, so he asked if I would be, uh, if we would be willing to go with the original 
them out, and I told them, yes, that would be of course. fine. We agreed once. We agreed <laughs> once, yes, we'll do it again. So we might have to re-up that, Tony, we might have to look at that, how we did that before, and make sure we, we got it and it's in place. But in any event, we'll, uh, I, I will inform the senator's office that I informed everybody up here and that we are in agreement to uh, move forward with that. Excellent. Okay, at that new price. So that was good news. Um, other than that, that's, uh, that's all I have. If uh, we can go on, uh, Joanne. Oh, excuse me. Let's start with uh, Gary. I'm sorry. Uh, shout out to uh, Troop 79. I had the pleasure of spending uh, a week up there at uh, Camp Cedar, which is in Barnegat, the Boy Scout Troop. Uh, numerous Spirit Awards and Troop Awards. Just a, just a fun time for the boys. If it's not damp, it's not camp. That's the, uh, <laughs> that's the slogan up there. Um, yeah. Code, I got a bunch of calls from Code. I want to remind everybody there is a process. Our clean and lean program is in effect, but we have, do have to send out notifications before we send crews to clean up properties. So just be patient on that. Uh, myself and the Deputy Mayor um, uh, Hayes spent uh, considerable time with the bike path and the concerned citizens and the different uh, community voices. So we're going to submit that to the uh, South Jersey Transportation um, group that's that's doing the bike paths or those different uh, those different um, feedbacks are, are well worth it so just keep them coming um, we are at the electrical drawing stage so we're looking for the electrical permits or electrical drawings for Caldwell now right so that's uh, that's uh, we're still working to the permits so the Caldwell lighting program is is uh, is in process and the community center is also um, diligently moving forward. There was a problem as we were peeling back the onion to, to get the floors corrected at this point. Um, yeah, we, we, there were some issues with the subfloor, which it's very clear that that's what was causing the major issues with the old floor that we're replacing. So we're in the process of making the repairs to that subfloor now. And the last thing I have uh, board is the uh, uh, pro video came out, verified for the speaker systems. And so with those parts are on order, and hopefully we can change out the speakers and kind of upgrade the, the sound system for the, for the uh, uh, chambers here. That will be welcome for me, because I can't hear very well <laughs> anymore. And we'll work on this lighter, too. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. Work order. <laughs> Keeps going out. It comes on, and then it goes out. It's got a mind of its own. Uh, OK, uh, Joanne. Tony. Very just one thing. Ducks in a row. Thank you. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, Zach, do you have anything for us tonight? Thank you. How about the peach replacement? Oh, uh, the peach replacement? Yeah. Could you tell everybody's status on that? So I've been in touch with the DEP. So basically September, end of September, October. November. Just to be clear, when we started this pro process, it was uh, April, yeah. right? <laughs> no, we started in, over a year ago. I mean, no, but it was supposed, it, to, it was be supposed to happen in April, and it's just they continue to push it back. And so. Uh, Barbara. Call the roll, please. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mrs. Hayes? Yes. Mr. Nathan? Yes. Mr. Panther? 
Yes. Yes. Hey, before Barbara closes out, I, we had sent an email to a Tony. Did you get the for the closed session item for the bond relative to the necessity that SEC put another requirement in and we're going to go out for a bail? That, that yes, you, you're okay with the? Yeah, so it's, it's not listed on closed session. We want to make sure that it's public knows what that item might be. So it's an SEC requ requirement. And that's all I Okay, thank you very much. Joanne. Yeah. We do have a uh, potential conflict with uh, uh, Committee McCorshin regarding uh, number, eight. number eight. So we can pull that off and vote on that separately and um, go from there. Now, it will not carry over to number nine, correct? Just to clarify, I am no longer in the campground business. I've sold my campground, but I'm holding paper for a little bit. So that, it just makes it clean. It's, it's, it's an appearance of a conflict. Yes. <laughs> okay, so can I have a um, motion for uh, items one through nine, less number eight, please? So moved. Second. Did you call the roll? Yes. 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 Yeah, I'll make a motion that we renew the campground licenses as submitted. Second. Uh, would you call the roll, please? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, here comes, this is uh, on here at my request, we had uh, a, uh, a notice from, or I got an email from a, uh, a resident concerning this uh, that had really nothing to do with, with my big reason for it, a little bit to do with my big reason for it, but it just brought it to a head once again. Uh, Upper Township is serviced by no less than five different zip codes, I think five or six, 08248, 08270, 08223, 08250, 08250. That's big, just a mainland. That's, no, I put 248 in oh, there, okay. so that's, that's, that includes Strathmere. Um, these cross not only township lines, they cross county lines. It is a public safety issue, number one in my forefront, is a public safety issue. Um, people, people, residents, citizens, visitors call uh, and request an ambulance or a fire or a police, and they're calling 911 and they insist that they live in Ocean View uh, or they insist that they live in Woodbine. That causes delays in response to get it to the right dispatch center and get the right departments and entities dispatched. Over the past several years, we have done a, through the Division of EMS and Chief Coker's efforts, we have done uh, an outreach to all the campgrounds. And every year we take a whole stack of, uh, of letters, flyers, to each campground to hand campers when they walk in the door. Um, this, this, is, uh, un, this is not what we should be doing. It, the 911 system and the public safety system, unfortunately, is being based off zip codes. Years ago, we attempted to, to reach uh, a conclusion that we're a change in this, to have one zip code through the whole township, you know, with a few exceptions for post offices that have just post office box where there's no delivery. Uh, that was met with um, disdain by the post office, and their response was postal zip codes were never meant to be um, geographic boundaries. Well, the point of the matter is that they might have never meant to be, but they are. They are evolving into that. Um, it also causes a great deal of, of uh, confusion and it, a great deal of inconvenience for our residents. For example, the resident that wrote the email requested was, was charged money to go pick his package up at the Woodbine Post Office when he has a post office box at, uh, at, in Tuckahoe. It, it's just ridiculous. I see flyers for 
Pino's Pizza that declare they're on Route 50 in Woodbine. Well, nowhere does Route 50 go through Woodbine. Nowhere. Uh, it also affects um, home values and appraisals. It's, it's been done on multiple occasions. It happened to one of my houses, that, that one of the houses that I've owned, I own a house on Dennisville Petersburg Road, and the insurance company went to the one in Dennis Township on Dennisville Petersburg Road. Same number. Same, same number. Same zip code. I think at one time, Kurt, Mom. your mother lived on Corson Tavern, lived the last house. And she, she lived at 133, and it was at 133 at the other end of Corson Tavern, Tavern in Dennis Township with the same zip code, same address. If you take the same house, and this is with all due respect to our good friends in Woodmine, same house and from Upper Township and put it in Woodmine, uh, it, the value it does go down. Just do the demographics and the location, and it's and it's totally, totally different. It also, I think, personally affects our ability to obtain grants and the like because our demographics are, are governed by zip codes. And everybody out there has seen the Social Security or Medicaid commercials that ask you to call and give us your zip code. You might be worth more money. So why is somebody in Petersburg, 08270, worth could get more money in 08223. It, I just am not, you know, I'm, I, I have a big problem with this. So what I'd like to do is, with the uh, approval of the Township Committee, is to, I, I don't, and I know we've been through this before, Joanne, and I know you brought some stuff up, but we got to do something again, you know, uh, and, and just let's try to move forward with this. Uh, the answers we got when uh, Congressman Lubiondo was in um, office were unsatisfactory. Due to his, um, due to the fact that Bonnet State's Postal Service is really no longer a government agency; they're supposed to be on their own. Yet our tax dollars, millions and millions of dollars, go to support it. Um, so I would request that uh, we, that, that, that Joanne, uh, draft a letter to Congressman Van Drew requesting a meeting of some sort or something to put together um, to to move forward with the, with the zip code issue. Uh, see if we can't do anything about I it. I think having Congressman Van Drew there is actually a plus mm -hmm. because he, yeah, he's living he's it. He's affected by yes. it. Yes. He, he will understand it and have first hand knowledge mm -hmm. of it. So I think that's a good thing because he lives on Corson Tavern Road. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, I don't know what it's Dennisville. I don't know what it's called down there. Not Corson Tavern Road. Uh, King's Highway or? No. Uh, Let's not put his address. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 just, yeah. We understand he's down there. He's, he's, he's in Dennis Township. That's good. <laughs> we can leave it there. So, and, and to bring it all, this really came to a head a couple of years, multiple years ago. Where we had a, a new resident in our Osprey Cove development that insisted that they lived in uh, Ocean View. So the 911 dispatcher over and over again tried to say, you live in you know, upper town. No, I live, in, I live in Ocean View. So they sent it to the Dennis Township ambulance. The Dennis Township ambulance responded out looking for the address, didn't find it, went back to the recorders and shut the ambulance off and forgot it. The guy's calling back, where's the ambulance, where's the ambulance? They finally figured out that the ambulance was, that it was Upper Township. Uh, it was dispatched. We finally got to the right dispatch center and we were there within four minutes. I think it was a four minute response time. So you were Echo Farm, it was a Echo Farm campground, it was a uh, Yes. And they, when you were in the campground, like that, you pick up your cell phone, you dial 911. Well, it pinged off the CL tower, mm -hmm. so it went to CL dispatch. Mm -hmm. These people, oh, we're in Ocean View. And I actually, that's about the time I got there, because I saw the smoke going up. And I said, and I actually called 911 when I heard these people were arguing with the dispatcher. I just, I dialed direct, direct over the city. It was properly dispatched. Ocean View came anyhow, because it, it was certainly needed to be there. So it's an ongoing problem. And uh, we're just trying to do what we can to do it. So if everybody's okay with that, we'll direct jo Joanne to write that letter. I'll sign it and move it on to the congressman's uh, office and see if we can't set, set, set something up. If you put together a committee to meet with the congressman, I'd like to be there because I, okay. I got first-hand knowledge from my mother and my sister and all living there. And, yeah. Okay, understood. All right, uh, I can move on. Uh, your pleasure on the bills. Hereby move that all claims submitted for payment at this meeting be approved and then incorporated in full in the minutes of this meeting. Second. Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Yes. Mrs. Hayes? Yes. 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 Okay. 
Okay, now it's time for public comment. Anybody from the public would like to? Yes, sir. Come on up and please state your name for the record and go for mayor. How you doing? My name is Gary Lecter. Ah, you're the one who I talked to, yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, do you need any help with your presentation? I'd <laughs> be happy to sit down with you and explain what I know about this procedure. Because I've been doing it for four years. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Can I just say something since we're on the office? Well, you can yeah. just got to step up and, and ask. Yeah, that's and it. Not yeah. ask, but state your name. State your name, state your name ma'am. Mailing address is too fine. 
Jersey. <laughs> it would only be then still if we had a post office box. Very good. Yep. And uh, I lived there when I lived on Petersburg Road. It's not then still Petersburg Road. It's Petersburg Road. It's the 610. When it was RB1. And my address was 424. And then they changed it to RB2 426. I really don't know why. But then they changed it to 426 Petersburg Road. And this is why I'm bringing this up because it may help you. It was for the purpose of emergency phone calls. Because if I dial 911 and said there's a fire, they don't know where RD2 426 is. So they need it 426 if you just go over for the sole purpose of emergency response. So with that, they still kept the um, blue line mailing zip code and there's just no way out of it. So if you open up the phone book today, it'll still list 426 Petersburg Road, Dennisville, New Jersey. And there's really no way to fix it. I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else from the public like to comment? Yes, sir. So what, what, I need we need your name for the record. Oh, sorry. Edward Price, who won't go to the name. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm a little slow because I had some brain surgery <laughs> recently. But um, I'm trying to find out what, what is going on with the uh, uh, VRBO. Oh, okay, the Air Airbnbs, the VRBO. Mm -hmm. Well, what we're going to do, we have not set it up yet, but we will have it set up prior to next meeting. Is we're going to have we'll have a, a, a little bit of a subcommittee with regard to uh, one of these couple committee township committee people, uh, some local residents, and potentially a realtor or two uh, that's familiar with the situation. And we're going to look at that again and uh, potentially uh, have a, have an ordinance that's put out. Thank you very much. I, and I know I'm glad you said look at it again because we looked at it once. Right. Well, it did get done, sir, not to, to belabor the point, but it did get done, but it, it ended up being too all-encompassing with regard to what we we're initially wanting to focus on. Understood. Yeah, there's a lot to yeah. it, so I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Your Honor, again, uh, what are you supposed to handle this by this meeting, not the committee setup? No, I don't think I said that, but okay. so how are but I will do it, but we will do it by next meeting. Yes. Yes. Well, you said that you're going to get some local um, uh, people in the township who are interested to be on the committee. How mm -hmm. are you um, finding that? Well, for, first of all, I said we had, I, had, I consulted with a couple of uh, realtors prior to the first one, and they offered assistance. And we'll just, uh, if you want to, email the administrator if you want to put your name in a hat, feel free. Okay. okay?
Thank you. Anybody else from the public? Uh, we don't allow, we do not allow repeats. <laughs> I have no idea. Not my, my time. Woodbine's right. always been Woodbine. You mean the post office? Actually, if you go back, well, I don't know how far back we want to go, but at one point in time, there were three townships in Cape May County, upper, lower, and middle. Every, now there's 16 municipalities. So yes, at one point in time, I believe Woodbine and Dennis Township was both part of upper township. But that was probably the late 1700s. <laughs> I mean, I don't think there's anybody here who remembers it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's Certainly not me. <laughs> but Woodbine has been its own zip code for as long as I can remember. 100 years probably. There used to be more zip codes. Uh, Seville, New Jersey had a post office. Palermo had a post office. There was post office in, uh, I believe, in Petersburg. Ta Tuckahoe used to do delivery. That's yeah. only in the last 10, yeah. 15 there, and there years. Was, I believe there was a post office in Beasley's Point. Yes, yeah, there was. I don't think that there is the, the zip code didn't come into fruition until uh, 1964, 65. Until right, so, so 1964, there was zip codes were established. Well, it's not just a Woodbine issue, it's, a, it's an Ocean View, Dennis Township yeah. issue. It's a, it's, a, it's a bigger issue than just Woodbine. Yeah. And then the other thing I had was um, about the land supply. Um, they seem to be doing some kind of a cooperative. I was wondering what the word is in the township about the land supply. We did a cooperative. Did a cooperative to get the insecticide. There's a there's a, a public service announcement. There's a big bulletin board stomp out the fly. Uh, Upper Township has been very proactive in taking away the various uh, food sources. Um, you know, but it's a it's a natural thing. I mean, um, of course, I'll tell you about the lantern flies are just like the gypsy moss. They're an invasive species. They're not native to our area. They were introduced. They are here to stay. Anybody else in the public? Thank you. Would you like to speak? Melissa, did, did you have something to share? I thought that was the gavel. I thought you were closing. All right, hearing uh, none, I will uh, close the public portion of the meeting and entertain a motion to go in closed session. Committeeman Pancoast. I hereby move that a resolution be incorporated into the minutes authorizing the Township Committee to enter into executive session for the following matters pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act. Number one, personnel. Number two, litigation, Boshong versus Upper Township. Number three, potential litigations, DCA complaint. Number four, contract negotiation block 730 lots 23 through 226. Number five, contract negotiation, Cape May County MUA host community benefit agreement. Number six, contract negotiation, New Jersey Turnpike Authority. And the add on number seven, contract negotiation, Phoenix Advisors. I also include in my motion the estimated time and the circumstances under which the discussion conducted in closed session can be disclosed to the public as follows. A, it is anticipated that the matters discussed in closed session may be disclosed to the public upon the determination of the Township Committee that the public interest will no longer be served by such confidentiality. B, with respect to employment and personnel matters, such discussion will be made public if and when formal action is taken or when the individuals involved consent that it can be made public. C, with respect to contract negotiation, such matters will be made public when negotiations have ceased and there is no longer a reason for confidentiality. D, with respect to litigation matters, such discussion will be made public when litigation is complete and the applicable appeal period has expired. Second. Let you call the roll, please. Mr. Morrison? Yes. 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 
I will be very short on a break so that everybody can clear the room and we'll uh, get started on the closed portion.